There is a command of Jesus that we have over the centuries consistently obeyed. And that is, do this in remembrance of me. Hello everyone, I'm Joseph Dinesh, a Catholic commentator from Sydney, Australia. As many of you might already know, the National Eucharistic Congress took place in Indiana from July 17th to July 21st. This event featured various Catholic speakers from around the world aiming to encourage the Catholic faithful in America to worship Jesus in the Eucharist as one church. This is particularly important given that many young American Catholics and numerous Protestant denominations still do not believe in the real presence. One of the most interesting talks was given by Bishop Barron who highlighted two significant points about the Eucharist that I believe every Protestant should hear. That's what we will be discussing in today's video. So let's get started. In the first clip, Bishop Barron explains that despite our sins, weaknesses and unfaithfulness, there is one command we consistently followed since the time of Jesus. Do this in remembrance of me. This command refers to the celebration of the Eucharist where we partake in eating his body and drinking his blood. Let's listen to what Bishop Barron has to say. The great English Catholic apologist Ronald Knox said something that's always stayed with me ever since I read it. Knox said that almost all of Jesus' commands have been dishonored or at best honored in the breach. Think of, you know, love your enemies and bless those who curse you and, and uh, uh, don't judge and all the moral demand of Jesus. Time and again, we disregard those. But strangely, Knox said, there is a command of Jesus that we have over the centuries consistently obeyed. And that is, do this in remembrance of me. Despite our sins, despite our failure, despite our stupidity and all of that, somehow we've known everybody by a very deep instinct that we must follow that command of the Lord. We've known somehow in our hearts how indispensable the Eucharist is. This is my body, Jesus says. This is my blood. And because he's not just one prophet among many, not simply a, a wisdom figure, but rather God from God, light from light, true God from true God, because he's that, what he says is. That's the basic theology of the church, the theology of the real presence. That's why we're here. But I want you to focus on maybe some words that we don't pay enough attention to. Jesus indeed says, this is my body, but then he adds, given up for you. This is my blood shed for you. What becomes really present in the Eucharist, everybody, is not just the body and blood of Jesus sort of dumbly and objectively there. What becomes really present is Jesus' body given, Jesus' blood poured out. When we, therefore, consume the Eucharist, we become what we eat, right? We become what we eat. We become conformed to a love unto death. We become a body given for others. We become blood poured out on behalf of others. Three things that we can learn from this clip. Number one, from the first century, Christians have inherently understood through faith and instinct that Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist. It is only after the Protestant Reformation that the view of the Eucharist as merely symbolic began to emerge. Prior to this, the Eucharist represented a deep spiritual connection and the continual presence of Jesus among his followers, making it indispensable for Christian life. Secondly, when the priest acting in persona Christi, in the person of Christ, says the words, this is my body and this is my blood. It is Jesus saying those words through the priest and which is why the transformation happens. This is not magic, but a supernatural phenomena happening because of the words of Jesus have the power to dictate reality. You ask why? Because he is almighty God, the second person of the Trinity, the creator of the universe and the very essence of being itself. Third, the Eucharist is not merely an objective reality. It is the body and blood of Christ given up for us so that we may partake in it and become what we consume. This participation in the Eucharist is meant to nourish and strengthen the faithful, empowering them to live out their Christian vocation. It calls them to be Christ-like in their actions, 
to love and serve others selflessly and to become instruments of grace and peace in the world just as christ gave himself for the redemption of humanity catholics are encouraged to offer themselves for the good of others reflecting the sacrificial love they have received now moving on in the second clip bishop baron explains that the eucharist is not meant for private possession but is intended to transform us into the likeness of christ and send us on a mission as reflected in the priest words at the end of the mass go the mass is ended let's go in peace to love and serve the lord your christianity is not for you christianity is not a self help program something designed just to make us feel better about ourselves your christianity is for the world our christianity is not for us we eat the body and drink the blood of jesus which have been offered for the world think here everybody of dear pope francis the church that goes out from itself yes yes the eucharist is not for us as a little private possession it's meant to conform us to christ who gives his body blood soul and divinity for the world it's vatican 2 the great conciliar document lumen gentium right the light of the nations who's the light well christ we're meant to be the bearers of that light to the gentes to the world that's the whole ecclesiology of the church that's what animated john paul ii benedict the 16th pope francis the same idea the church that goes out from itself since vatican ii appropriately There's been a lot of talk about the rights and privileges and prerogatives of the laity and that's right overcoming a sort of cramped clericalism and inviting the laity and all of that I love it I love it I'm totally for it but can I add maybe a word of challenge that's not been as stressed along with the rights and prerogatives of the laity is the obligation of the laity You know what Vatican II wanted? Vatican II wanted great Catholic lawyers, great Catholic politicians, great Catholic writers, great Catholic journalists, great Catholic parents, great Catholic educators going out into the world. Vatican II said the seculum, the the secular order, that's your space. Move into it with panache and energy and intelligence and enthusiasm. and become body given blood poured out we'd set the country on fire look at us so three things we can learn from this clip first bishop baron makes it very clear that christianity is not a self help program designed to make us feel better christianity is not a private religion but a public one this means that the christian faith is intended to transform us into the likeness of christ shaping us mentally emotionally and psychologically so that we can sanctify the world be the light to the nations and the salt of the earth and become what god wants us to be so that we can set the world on fire second one of the key themes of the second vatican council was the role of the laity the ordinary members of the church were not ordained clergy traditionally the clergy were seen as the primary agents of the church's mission however the council emphasized that all baptized christians not just the clergy are called to participate in the church's mission this means they have an obligation to contribute to the life and work of the church in various capacities third the council envisioned cultivating outstanding catholic professionals in various fields such as law academia science and sports the goal was for catholics to live out their faith in their respective vocations thereby becoming a transformative force in the world just as christ sacrificed himself for the redemption of humanity catholics are called to offer their talents efforts and lives for the betterment of the world the metaphor of becoming the body given and the blood poured out for the sanctification of the world underscores this idea finally i would like to end with the quote of saint pope john paul ii and i quote the church draws her life from the eucharist this truth does not simply express a daily experience of faith but recapitulates the heart of the mystery of the church i hope this video was helpful let me know your thoughts in the comment section god bless you